Harry's wife, the dominoes start to fall. With certain individuals, when they're on their way up, everything they touch turns to gold. They have that hockey stick moment where a combination of talent and years of hard work suddenly pays off. There is an explosion of interest in this individual and the product that they have created, the service that they offer, the talent that they exhibit for singing or writing, whatever it might be. And they gain momentum. People are interested in, therefore, people want to be associated with the success. They're a rising star. People want to invest. This is the bright new thing. This is the great hope that has emerged. This is an interesting and exciting opportunity. They can see the talent. They can see the potential. The individual is guided by the appropriate publicist, plugged into the various contacts and networks that they have cultivated. That breeds more success. Because they become prominent and well-known for a primary area, they are able then to cross-pollinate into other areas. So that successful individual releases a couple of books. They're successful. Everybody enjoys them. They're interesting and insightful. They bring out some audiobooks off the back of that. They extend into a range of fragrances. They have a clothing line. And thus, their star is in the ascendancy. And with a carefully managed persona and hard work and recognising the brand that they are creating, they meet with huge monetary success. People want to be involved with the successful. They want to be part of the action. And the fact that they are so well-known, popular and well-liked means that it starts to maintain that momentum. Thereafter, they reach the top and they can maintain staying there as a consequence of responding to careful advice, listening to the experts, the people that have got them there before, the people that have moved from one stage to another, the experts. And they listen to that, and they harness that expertise. And the brand that they have created avoids making elementary errors and stays as a winner. They may not necessarily have to put in as much work as they once did. Everything ticks over nicely. They avoid making the mistakes. But then there are others who, in the words of the Great Depeche Mode, when you reach the top, get ready to drop. And that the star starts to fall and there's a downward spiral. And that because this person is then viewed as tainted, people don't want to be associated with a failure. And therefore, they start to be deserted. Supporters find somebody else to be interested in. The readers think it's stale and boring, whatever has been produced. And they go and find a different author. People move on to a different pop star. Someone who's associated with scandal or popularity. Well, it's not the done thing as a human being to support somebody like that. They can't even be a guilty pleasure any longer. Brands don't want to be associated with anybody that's tainted or plummeting. That is brand suicide. The offers dry up or are only replaced with less attractive ones, ones which are less monetary rewarding. And it gathers pace. In the way that somebody who is in their ascendancy suddenly finds their momentum getting faster and faster and faster, it's the same in reverse. That as that individual plummets from the rarefied position that they once enjoyed, blow after blow lands upon them. People desert them. They no longer want to be associated with that failure. There's nothing for them to take. There are no crumbs at the table any longer. No fat that can be trimmed away. The advisors disappear. They can't be bought. The supporters vanish. This is the situation that Harry's wife finds herself purely as a consequence of her own behaviour as a narcissist. And this has been captured by Daniela Elsa, in news.com.au, where she writes, Star is falling. Sussex brand in turmoil as Harry and Harry's wife lose lucrative Spotify, Netflix deals. Bad days, Elsa writes. We've all had them, but Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, has had a hell of a lot. 
Leaving aside the abject soul-shaking loss of his mother, there were the bad days of his parents' rancorous split when he was yanked off the front line and dumped in an army desk job, when his relationships with Chelsea Davy and Cressida Bonus tanked because they didn't fancy the misery of royal wifedom, and that one very bad day when he realised that his sink was, fun- was suddenly full of strands of red hair. Now comes one of the very worst of bad days that H has had in years. With him losing up to $18 million in one fell swoop, and with fears that he and wife, Harry's wife, the Duchess of Sussex Post, makes it empire, is crumbling. The first domino to fall came on Friday, when Spotify pulled the plug on its $29 million deal with the Sussexes, and the second domino appeared to be teetering when it was reported that Netflix is unlikely to renew their contract. It's something of an indication of how swiftly the Sussex's fortunes appear to be shifting that one report has even thrown up the B word for the first time. Broke. With a source stressing to page six that the Duke and Duchess are not broke. Well, I'm sure that assurance will really warm the cockles of their bank manager's heart. Orlando Bloom might want to get that fiver back from Harry he lent him when the neighbours went out for root beer floats. But let's start at the beginning, when late last week, in a piece of news about as startling as finding out that the Princesses York have a shared walk-in fascinator annex, that Spotify was done with the Sussexes' indolent lack of output. While Harry's wife had delivered a 12-part podcast series called Archetypes last year, a self-regarding orgy of Californian ease word salad that couldn't even be saved by a roster of starry guests like Serena Williams and Mariah Carey, that was pretty much it. Despite Harry being a part of the deal, the Duke never once managed to actually release a single programme of his own. Instead, following in the centuries of tradition of royal spares, being better for combining both idleness and a pervading aura of malcontent. Within a hot minute of the streamer confirming they had consciously uncoupled from the Sussexes, Spotify's head of podcast innovation and monetization, Bill Simmons, decided to unleash on the couple, calling them fucking grifters. Simmons also revealed an abortive attempt to help the Duke, saying, I gotta get drunk one night and tell the story of this Zoom I had with Harry to try to help him with the podcast idea. It's one of my best stories. Then faster than Harry could stream some soothing whale noises or turn up Iron Maiden to do some cathartic headbanging in their guest house, entertainment and royal insiders were queuing up to spell out how parlous things are for Brand Sussex right now. One industry source told Page Six, I think they have come off as being lazy and difficult. In The Sun, former Harry biographer Angela Levin popped up to say that the Duke and Duchess's empire is crumbling and that people are fed up with them now. In the Daily Mail, PR guru Mark Mark Bukowski said, The air is going out of their much-hyped balloon. Their star is really falling. It is not a good day for the long-term brand of Harry's wife and Harry. Also in the Mail, brand and culture expert Nick Ede said, It looks like Harry's wife's brand isn't such a box office winner, and I can see a lot of other businesses following suit. In the Times, the paper's podcast review amused that for Spotify to have pulled the plug, he suspected that listening numbers would have been very low indeed. Even the normally sympathetic to the Sussexes Newsweek had entertainment expert Mark Boardman saying, future deals of this kind for Harry and Harry's wife will be hard to come by and they face being presented with a lower fee in future. Still, no matter, the major plank in their post-palace money-spinning operation is the $145 million deal they have with Netflix. And just like that, the Jaws theme tune starts to play. Because within 48 hours of the Spotify news breaking came the Sun's royal editor Matt Wilkinson reporting that the entertainment giant is unlikely to renew the Duke and Duchess's contract. With no season two of their trial by teary pieces to camera planned and the Duke's Invictus Games doco, the only project they have on the go, a source told Wilkinson, there is a less friendly attitude from some at the top. The feeling is that the lemon has been fully squeezed. The big books Harry and Harry's wife signed on for do not exist today, the source said. 
While the paper reported that the Sussexes are prepared to see out their contractual obligations with Netflix, no sort of reciprocal settlement has come out of Netflix. Just in case Harry and Harry's wife weren't already reaching for that one good bottle of scotch they nicked from Buckingham Palace the last time they were allowed past the front gates, then came the Daily Mail bringing up the rear, raising similar doubts over the Sussex's future with the entertainment behemoth. Speculation is rife in Hollywood last night that Netflix may be preparing to follow Spotify in severing links with the Sussexes, the Mail reported. A source at the streamer said, The relationship has not always been great. Harry is no problem, but Harry's wife thinks she knows how to run Hollywood. Pausing there, that is unsurprising. The talentless Duchess believes she knows it all as a consequence of her sense of entitlement and grandiosity. So let's summarise here. Spotify, all over Red Rover. Netflix, unlikely to renew things. Harry and Harry's wife are seen as lazy and difficult. The feeling at the streamer, reportedly, is that the Sussex lemon has been fully squeezed, i.e. they've lost whatever juice or value they represented previously. The feeling there may have been many moments when things looked dicey for Harry and Harry's wife, but this would have to be one of the worst, if not the worst, turns of fate for the duo since they hightailed it out of the United Kingdom. If their Netflix contract goes the way of Spotify, then they are well and truly up the proverbial creek, son's handcrafted, ethically sourced paddle. It would be the equivalent of that bit in Jaws when the shark jumps on the boat and starts chomping on a leg. To paraphrase Oscar Wilde, to lose one deal may be regarded as a misfortune, to lose both looks like carelessness. Or, it looks like Harry and Harry's wife, their royal stories spent, are just really bad bets for big business. Who is going to want to bankroll the Sussexes now? How in God, aka Oprah's name, would the Sussexes pull in the previously estimated $5 million plus they need annually for living costs if their TV deal also goes out of the window? The way things are going, we could be seeing a Princess Lilibet bow range available exclusively in Target any day now. The current state of their finances is a thorny question. While the couple managed to ink north of $200 million in deals in their first 18 months in the United States, it's not as if these companies simply dumped scads of money in their account while they chew the ends of their Tiffany & Co. pencils and try to think of programming ideas. Rather, these sort of packages are more likely to have seen the couple's earnings dependent on their output, with their Spotify deal ending early, meaning they will have lost out on millions. Page Six has reported that they will not be paid anything close to the full amount they could have earned under the deal, while PR guru Borkowski has estimated that the end of their Spotify run will have cost them up to $14.5 million, which also happens to be roughly the same size as the mortgage they took out in 2020. They're not broke, a source stressed per Page Six, but they're going to have to keep spending their money instead of banking it. This is dire news indeed, given the couple's penchant for private jets, polo, and that time Harry's wife wore nearly $70,000 worth of clothing in only six days last year. Little wonder that when paparazzi shots of the Duchess emerged over the weekend, she looked stressed and about as unhappy as the day she learned that Kensington Palace Kitchens did not automatically stock oat milk. In April, Harry's wife and Harry's wife alone signed on with Hollywood mega-agent Ari Emanuel, and there is now speculation that the former actor might be signed up as the new face of Christian Dior. Even if this came off, the fee would not be even in the same ballpark as their Spotify deal with nine figures of the Netflix one. Let me leave you with this bit of irony. While the Duke and Duchess are facing a possibly grim financial future, back in the United Kingdom, King Charles is busy giving away the Crown Estate's cut of profits from a $1.8 billion wind farm deal because he wants to help Brits. So while lots of hot air is paying off for his majesty, lots of hot air just might be the Sussexes' undoing. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.